Good evening, Todd Mance, Director of STEAM here at Greenberg. This is our, ooh, I want to say, third annual science extravaganza. So what we do is we showcase all of our STEAM events for the year, uh, our, from um, our pre-K students up to our high school students. We have everything from demonstrations to science fair projects. We have some of our out, uh, outside uh, friends, digital arts experiences right behind us. We have uh, some uh, BASF scientists, you know, general scientists doing demonstrations for our students. So community event kind of our capstone and our culminating activity for our STEAM 2016-17 school year. So, um, hope you enjoyed. Lots of things to see, lots of things to do. This is a totally hands-on extravaganza. You're gonna be busy for the next three hours, okay? So have a fun, enjoy yourselves. My name is Kevin Bravo, and I am the artist to this poster for this year's Science Extravaganza. And the theme of the poster is necessity is the mother of invention, so, Basically, it's all just uh, someone's in the dark, and here Thomas Edison comes out and uh, to help him. Brings the light bulb, of course, because he made the light bulb, and you know he just explains to the guy he don't gotta be in the dark no more because the light bulb is invented. So that's, that's pretty much it to the poster, and uh, I'm just happy I won. Hi, my name is Nicholas Souza from the Digital Arts Experience. We're an after-school program that focuses on digital arts, so animation, visual effects, web uh, design, programming, we do it all. Uh, we're here today just demoing our 3D printer and our mobile express van, and we have our summer camps coming up pretty soon, so feel free to check us out at www.thedae.com. Okay, we're the AUW, and the children here are learning about acids and alkalis, and they're looking at red cabbage juice, which changes color. So first of all, he's going to take the lemon juice, put it in the first one and see if anything happens. And these are the colors that we get. We just, oh, look at that, great. Okay, that's what lemon juice does. Now you're going to do vinegar in the next one. Let's see if it makes a different color. Wow, look at that. All right, this is a makerspace. We're making electri uh, I'm sorry, noodle robots out of half an electric toothbrush and a pool noodle. So the kids put the electric toothbrush into the noodle, which is easier with two hands, and then they get to decorate. And when they turn them on, yeah, we've gotten kids, adults, all ages showing up tonight. science extravaganza and we are face painting. We have a butterfly being painted over here and I'm sorry what, we, what do you have? A bunny rabbit. A bunny rabbit and you're getting flowers. So we have all kinds of art, art, art at work here. Which is science that makes us happy. So right now we have the 3D printer. This is the district's 3D printer. And uh, we've printed many, many uh, different things on the 3D printer. Right now it's printing uh, Paddle Boat with a software. Uh, basically download um, whatever it is. You, you get a file, for instance, this is a Paddle Boat, and it always prints it out in little parts. So right now we've got it going there in, in a few parts. And uh, when it finishes, we put all the parts together. Um, over here with mold models that we use in the classroom, for instance, if we're trying to teach students about how chromosomes switch parts, uh, and then their parents, uh, their children will look a little different from their parents, uh, this is exactly what we would have. So this chromosome may come from the parent. 
mom, these chromosomes may come from dad, and we teach the kids that these chromosomes are going to switch parts that will look like this. So now we have the child looking a little bit like mom, a little bit like dad. Uh, for our high level students in AP Chemistry, we've been using uh, something like this to teach them how solids actually look. Uh, when we break down uh, a metal to its core, we see that the atoms are arranged in this way. And it's an abstract concept to teach students looking at a textbook, but when they can actually print it out and we show them and they can touch it and they can feel they actually understand exactly what we're talking about. So I'm here today re representing BASF, we're a chemical company, uh, have over 100,000 employees uh, in the world and we're global and we're here just sharing some of the work that we're doing in, at our Tarrytown site. I'm here with my colleagues Debbie and Matt and Matt is a molecular biologist and uh, Debbie is an inorganic chemist and we're talking about some of the fermentation work we do in the white bank biotechnology space as well as effect pigments where we create different effects based on the layer of oxides on a substrate. And so um, we can do that with uh, biology, biotechnology. So are, are you familiar with how you add yeast in to make, uh, make bread? It eats the sugars and expands, makes uh, carbon dioxide, makes the bread rise. Also, um, I heard of like, how to make like, um, uh, beer and wine. You add yeast in and ferments the sugars and makes the ethanol. So that's, uh, that's the heart of kind of the processes which we use. And for instance, here we have a solution that has very um, high amounts of sugar. No, no yeast cells can add yeast in. They grow and it actually collecting the CO2. So what we, can, what we like to do at BSF is to take these same processes but genetically engineer the yeast and the microbes. For instance, here's some microbes right here. So we take these and genetically engineer them. So that they, instead of making ethanol, right, uh, wine or beer, um, or CO2 and baking, they'll make a different chemical, for instance, um, fatty alcohols, which would go into your shampoos. So um, we want to make um, uh, other products that can both help the planet and make us um, some, some money at the same time um, with our um, bio, bio, biotechnology uh, solutions. called the Imagination Station, and it's to highlight the design process of thinking first of a particular need and coming up with um, some type of material that's going to fulfill the need. Um, thinking first, sketching and drawing out a plan, and then building it, and then retesting it. So we have different recyclable materials that the children are putting together to make different objects that they can, that they can use. It's repurposing, it's really cool. I think that's a good style. Our sixth graders in our science enrichment course um, designed an app and after designing an app that worked with a particular platform of either iPhone or Samsung, which they researched, they then created a commercial, which they wrote the script for, 
and they filmed and acted in and then edited and then we assigned a QR code to each commercial so that you could see what it is that their app would do. And then this is the result of one of the apps. So there you go. Once we scanned the QR codes, it came up with this, this little story and the whole thing is right there. Pretty, pretty simple. So how does, that, how does that work? How do you get it on your phone? You have to download a QR code reader. Once you download that, you can just kind of take a picture of the QR code. It takes you right to the commercial. Star Lab. The Star Lab. What are you going to do in there? We're going to learn about the constellations. Oh, that's a big word. What does that mean? It means stars it's that the, together. It's the Latin word of stars together. And then he puts the, the rock that reacts with it in there. And because there's a cap on the bottom, it explodes up because of the pressure building up. And it wants to rock it up. Hi, my name is Sashana Nixon, and I did my project on the zebra mussels. And zebra mussels are invasive species that was discovered in the Hudson River in 1991. And every five years, there was a zebra mussel spike. So it increases the density of the oxygen that was in the water that um, allowed the zebra mussels to outnumber the other organisms in the water that took away their food and that's why they're invasive and the other or organism died because of the zebra mussels. Hi, I'm Kayla Cruz. And I'm Mary Machetu. And we did our project on the human blind spot to, and to see if your eye color can affect it. The reason we did this project is because we were interested in the human eye and people's blind spots. Also, we were interested in different eye colors and if it affects your sight. So, in order to make our project accurate, we tested only teenagers. So basically our experiment, um, we had an um, a design where you could test how you see your blind spot and our question was, um, if people with green eyes can identify their blind spot faster than people with brown eyes. And from our data you can see that people with green eyes were able to identify, identify it faster, which is what our hypothesis was. Um, yeah. So you're telling me eye color actually? From our data, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's Yes, okay. Over here, our research says that the blind spot is caused by the lack of receptors where the optic nerve and the blood, uh, blood vessels leave the eye. And the blind spot occurs where axons pass over the front of the uh, retina covers coverage um, two from the head of the optic nerve. So basically, when we tested it, we asked the people um, if we moved a card with an X and a dot on it, and we moved it closer to their faces, and we asked them where the dot would disappear and reappear, and we marked it on the floor, and we tested the different uh, measurements away from the board, and from that, we have got our data. So, what is a, tell me what a blind spot is. What does that mean, okay. a blind spot? So, a uh, blind spot is called by the lack of receptors, where the optic nerve and blood vessels leave the eye. So basically, when we did our project and we had the, the X and the, the dot, 
and we would move it in and we would move it in where you cannot really see it is where your blind spot is so let's say I'm looking at a paper and you're looking at a paper and I can see the small words but you can't see the small words our eyes are different so your blind spot is different from my spot so, hi, I'm Ashley Holguin, and I did my project on lipase at different temperatures. So, what lipase is, is it's a type of enzyme, and what it does is it breaks down fats. So, usually lipase works together with bile in our body. Uh, what bile does is it takes this glob of fat and it makes it smaller, so it makes it easier for the lipase to be able to break it down. So, what my project did was I mimicked the body of someone who's gotten their gallbladder removed because... What I did was I tested the power of lipase but without the bile salt. So I tested it to make sure how it would work without it. So I tested lipase at the different temperatures because what an enzyme usually does when it reaches extreme temperatures is it becomes denatured. What this means is it no longer works. So I tested lipase at the temperatures of 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 65, 75, 85, 95, and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I did was I had a bit of water in a test tube, and then I had fat, um, I mean, vegetable oil on top, and then I had lip base inside of it, and I wanted to see how well it would break down the fat. So the way I looked to see how much it broke it down was through this. So I did it both visually and through pH because the product of the breaking down of fats results in two things. It results in fatty acids and glycerols, more acidic, and then, okay, so another way I looked at it was visually, so 0% were distinct layers, 25% globular droplets, 75% very tiny droplets, and 100%, which it was like really broken down. So what I did was, as I already said, I tested it at the different temperatures, and what I saw through my research and through my data was as the temperature increased, um, from 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 105 degrees Fahrenheit is that the lipase did work better and the reason I think that it worked better was because at 55 degrees Fahrenheit it's further away from 98 degrees Fahrenheit which is the temperature your body usually is at so due to the fact that it was getting closer to the temperature it usually works in it started working better so that was my data and I saw that it did break down the fat better and these are photos of what I did and then for further research I wanted to see I wanted to compare the data of breaking it down without the bile because as I said that does aid the lipid uh, the lipase so with the bile I was able to see that there was more of a breakdown in the fat and yeah that was my project Hi, my name is Zoe Denton, and this is my partner, Marie Kennedy. And for our project, we determined whether smell was connected to taste. And the way we did that was we got 10 people, and we blindfolded them. And then we put nose plugs in their nose. And then we gave them a slice of cantaloupe. And then we asked them whether they can determine what was in their mouths or not. And then after they gave us, after they gave us their answer, we took out their nose plugs, we gave them a drink of water, and we tried it again. We did that two times, one with honeydew and one with cantaloupe. And that's basically it. As you can see, for our results, our data, we got everyone without nose plugs said yes to whether or not they could um, uh, determine what was in their mouth. And everyone without nose plugs, well this is without, this is with nose plugs, everyone with nose plugs couldn't determine what was in their mouth. And we got the same results for the cantaloupe. This is honeydew, this is cantaloupe. For our materials for this project, we use you know, nose plugs, blindfolds, honeydew, cantaloupe, test subjects, the people, and we use water. Um, this is our graph. It's the same as the uh, chart. You can see people with honeydew with the nose plugs, which is here. They, um, this is yes, so this is the number of yes and 10 people said yes, they could taste it without the nose plugs. Um, and for this, with the nose plugs, zero people said couldn't determine what was in the mouth. It's the same as the chart. And for our research, we realized that smell and taste belongs to a chemical sensing system called chemo sensation. Um, basically, um, smell nerves are called olfactory cells, and taste nerves are called the story cells. 
and overall they're just really connected and that was our project. Alright, hello, my name is Roman Gibson and what I did for my project was I had yeast and hydrogen peroxide and I mixed it up together and I put it in this bottle and when I put that mixture, the, um, it created bubbles and it made the balloon inflate. Then what I did next was I had a jar and I covered the jar with a candle and as I put the balloon into the jar, the um the candle became brighter because of the oxygen that was that was put into the jar. And my results for my experiment was the time before I put the, the time before I put the jar um, over the candle, it lasted 42 seconds. Then the time with the balloon filled with oxygen, it lasted two minutes and 30 seconds. Then time after the deflation of without oxygen lasted um, 30, um, one minute and 30 seconds. And yeah, that's it. Our final presentation for the evening, and again, I'm glad you're staying and joining us, is entitled The Greatest Story Never Told. And this is a live production of the James Herman Banding story. And our artists are among us in some instances. And uh, we'll be ready to start in a couple of moments. At the end of this, we will do our raffle. We have our raffle picking. We have uh, the items in the knitting club has a raffle also. So stick around to the end. Enjoy the show. Be a good audience as you've been all evening. And I'm going to turn it over to our um, actors and actresses for this evening.
Their son flying across the country when just two generations earlier, my great grandmother was a slave. Ain't that something? I mean, going from slavery two generations prior to flying across the country? Now that's something special. My name is James Herbert Bannon. I'm a pilot. And I'm not just any pilot. I'm the first Negro to get his pilot's license in the United States. And before it's said and done, I want to be the first Negro to make it from California all the way to New York City. New York City, Statue of Liberty! Oh, come on. Here yeah, we go again. You just couldn't wait for me now, could you? Oh, where's talking? Did, 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 did he say he was a pilot? He said, I, I knew he was going to say, that's all he talked about. And he don't uh, So you're going to say that you're such a great pilot and I'm just a mechanic, huh? Uh, oh, so, so you are banning the pilot. So important. Oh, yeah. Now, did he tell y'all that I can fly? Did he tell you that? No, no he didn't tell you that, huh? He didn't say that. Because it's all about him. It's all about you, huh? Why you ain't telling him? He didn't say your name. You didn't even say, he didn't even say my name. Oh, no. you, is he serious? Yeah. He didn't say my name. Oh, so, so, so you said, I don't matter, huh? Really? Let me ask you this. Who gave you that 200 you needed, huh? huh? Oh, 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 you know, who got that old bird up and flying? Who y'all think did? Folks, this here is Thomas Cox Allen. Oh, thank you. He mm -hmm. bought his way off the flight with $200. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. You just told these people I bought my way off? Well, you're not here because you're so easy to get along with. Look, remember why we're here. We're here because we need to get the Lord's work. The only way we can do that is if the townspeople from Tucson can help us out. So you just gonna keep talking as usual when you plan on being a natural boost yourself? What's that supposed to mean? It means you're always complaining. You know, you complain more than but more than what? So you don't watch your mama, you got a lot of people out here. Don't tell me what no. You do not talk to me, I'm right here. You do not say something. Say. The townspeople, remember? <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Mm. Uh, we? Uh, we, but you were just about to tell me what you were going to say. Let me start over. My name is James Herman Bannon. I'm a pilot, the first Negro to receive his license in the United States. Now, I don't know what you're thinking. How does a Negro man get his pilot's license in 1927? In 1932, and a lot of people aren't very friendly. I'll tell you one thing. You have to be very careful. You have to be able to fly better than the best. You gotta be the best. Because people are so willing to decide that a colored person can't fly. But I can fly. I can barnstorm with the best of them. There's not a single stunt that I can't do. I can loop the loop, barrel roll, and spin dive. <laughs> When you're colored and you want to fly, you also got to be able to fix your old bird when it breaks down. Especially when your old bird got a 14-year-old engine. That big can need constant fixing. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So I might joke around with Alan, but I do need a great mechanic. That's me. <laughs> so like I said, we have to be able to put this bird back together more often than we should. You, you see, uh, Alan and I, <laughs> We're known as the Suntan Lindbergs. <laughs> I mean, the real joke is that no Lindbergh would ever fly our old plane. It has a 14 year old engine and salvage parts. And what I am, Mr. Lindbergh has a special plane. Oh, special? Oh, yeah. Now, Charles Lindbergh had numerous backers. I mean, enough to pay for his expedition and build the perfect plane to fly a the ocean. He had tons of money. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Now his spirit of St. Louis was custom built and the best plane of his day. It had a single engine with extra power to accommodate that extra weight for takeoff. Wings stretched from a normal 27 feet to 45 feet in length. 45 feet in length. Hey, hey, that's not all. Now, the pilot's cockpit, they put that behind the fuel tanks. Fuel tanks which carry 400 gallons. Ooh. Lindbergh had a specially designed plane. 
a plane designed by him so he can carry more gas and have extra lift. Wow, ain't that something? Designing your own plane to fly across the United States. Hmm. Our old bird could carry 35 gallons. Think about that. 35 gallons compared to 400 gallons. Uh -huh. And what did we have when we took over California? A rickety old Eagle Rock with a 14-year-old engine and 25 dollars. Yes, and no one gave us money to build a special plane. And Lindbergh had every newspaper full of everything he does. And New York Times isn't covering us with what we're doing. You think it's because of the Negro? Hey, uh, you know, New York Times, anybody here from the New York Times? That's yeah, a good point. I look like a reporter. You get me from the New York Times. You know what? If you want to take a picture, they look like you. Hold on, hold on. Matter of fact, you don't have to do it for you. Just take a picture. Take a picture of me, because I'm going to be good for a table. Wait, you know what? Take my good side. Because this is my good side right here. Take you know that. What? Your good side means you can face away from the camera. Uh, okay. Alan's right. She pulled out our stand $25 in our pockets. You gotta be wondering why we're doing this. We take it to the sky and we can so that one day you can. Why? To make sure all you all know that being Negro doesn't mean you can't fly. Mm -hmm. You can. No matter what anybody else says. Freedom in the air will one day lead to freedom on the ground. William Powell. William Powell. Hmm. This is a time when this, when this country considers a Negro less than you, unable to do the same task as whites, especially fly a plane. And I'm proving that we can't. We can't fly. We can do anything we set our minds to. We are proving that. <laughs> Look. We are, uh, we're traveling all across, but all we need is enough money to get to Lawsburg. Now, any donations, uh, a place to sleep, food, uh, um, some, some gas money, anything, you know, you know what I'm Okay, you know what? Everyone who donates gets to sign the wing of our plane. Mm -hmm. We call that the Gold Book. Now, that, that was my idea, the Gold Book. You know, I got a great idea. Look, if, if we just need someone, uh, sir, you look like a chef. You chef up pretty good? Look, we're really hungry. You've been uh, talking about right? 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 Southwest of the farm. 
So after about three days, we broke camp about 11 in the morning, and we started our journey back home, our wagon. But there seemed to be more people in town than usual. Now we, woo, we had caught a big load of fish. I mean, it was, no, it's, I, it was more like, I mean, it was a big load. Now we, it was bigger than that. It was a big, okay, go to all. So we weren't really paying attention to what the crowd was looking at. We just kept on our way. However, about a quarter mile from the farm, this great rattling noise just the star was. So I looked up, and I saw the first airplane I ever seen of three, four hundred feet above. Since we had been gone for about three days, we had not been looking for this flying machine that we really know was coming into town. I did make a remark out, I hope something would happen. So maybe the crowd got to stay in town for the next day, maybe we could see it. Late that evening, the report came in that the ship hit a stump and broke up a pillar. Now, 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 I had nothing to do with that. I did, I, I promise you. But I can't say I was sorry, because I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, we, whoo, we looked at that plane and it was, <laughs> it was something else. So when I looked at that Jimmy, I said, one day, I'm going to fly one of them things. In the meantime, another plane came with a propeller, and I sat there, I watched them put it on, and I remained until those two planes took off. And I talked nothing but airplanes until my family moved to Oklahoma City in 1920. Loved it. Decided that day, I was going to fly. It's <laughs> oh, amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way we came to fly, I was born in 1899, the same year the Wright brothers started the experiments to fly. That same year. So you saying you was meant to fly? Because, you know, lots of people were born that year. I'm saying I learned about flight at my mom and pa's knees. Mm -hmm. They can read and they read to us. One of my first memories was my dad telling me about the flight brothers taking off for 39 minutes on an aerial plane. I mean, how amazing is that? You remember that? Uh, I wasn't born yet, old man. <laughs> well, I started building kites. I remember standing outside my house as a young boy flying a kite for the first time. <laughs> I mean, it took me several times to make it. The first time I was some leaves and twigs, which quickly fell apart and never even made it in the air. I mean, you know how that is. You know how to make something that just doesn't work? That didn't stop me. I built kites too. Did yours fly? Mine's like the crash to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but occasionally one would take flight and something to see. Mm -hmm. You know, one time, I got so excited, I didn't look where I was going and snapped right into the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like mine, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I have seen trouble getting my flights a day up in the air. I figured I needed something better than twigs and leaves. So I snatched some fabric from the Mars sewing basket, placed two sticks together in some twine, and I was off, rolling through the fields. It soared, truly, free. Hmm. Beautiful. You know what that's like? You wanted something badly enough that you don't care how many times you fail because you know one day you want to make it. I always wanted to be a bird man. No other flesh can do it. Let me play him. And Lieutenant Fisher, he agreed to teach me on the slot. Of course, on the slide, it didn't last all that long. It's not as if the other students didn't notice I was a neat boy flying. And they were air minded as well. They only cared about that. Even after the KKK came to the moon. Then, uh, Lieutenant Fisher died in a crash. And I still didn't get my soul about this. I mean, I could fly. But no other flight school would let me play. Besides, Lieutenant Fisher, the only answer I ever got when, he, when I asked for lessons to borrow a plane was, you know, boy, you can't fly. You a Negro. <laughs> as if you didn't know. As if I needed to look in the mirror. Well, that made me even more determined to get my soul out. So yes, I used to have built my first plane. Yup, built it using the engine from the plane Fisher crashed in. Now, I'm not superstitious. An extra salvage plane and auto parts, 
Let me tell you, people crash a lot. And after I built it, I rode around that cow pasture for hours, too afraid to fly. <laughs> you know, I could just see it. Too afraid to fly. They call it Danny's ground plane. <laughs> Sadly true. And I might still be riding that ground plane if I didn't cut too close to the trees that morning. I was going too fast. I pulled back on the fly and just barely missed the top of the tree. My heart was racing. I mean, racing faster than a herd of wild ponies. And I was flying. Lord, right up there on my own, I missed the cloud. I can't even put in words how great that was. A me flying by myself, a bird man, a Negro bird man? You tell. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what else I felt. Freedom. Mm. No one couldn't tell me I couldn't fly. I was flying, and I was free. So I'm here. So we're here. You know, maybe we should tell these good people of Lordsburg why we're here. I mean, who we are, maybe what we're doing in Lordsburg. Come on. We call ourselves the Flying Hobos. We're flying from Los Angeles all the way to New York City. Yes, why we're flying? For you. So that one day you want to be up in the clouds, you can do it. Uh, look, 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 look. We're homeowing across the country. All we need is enough money to get from Lawsburg to El Paso. Now, I mean, anybody who donates, they get to sign the wing of our plane. We call it the Gold Book. Now, I came up with that idea, the Gold Book. That's on me. I know I that way you can fly with us. Every step of this journey, you all can fly with us. Now, what much do we need in gas money? What? Did you calculate it? Uh, not yet. I'll mean, calculate. Just, just go and take a break. Right, let me add up these figures. Okay, look, I need a little help. Um, <clears throat> so we, we got to figure out how much it's going to cost us to get from Lawsburg to El Paso. Now, anybody ever here want to help me? Um, what was the... Oh, see, I, I need, I like y'all. Now, tell me, what's one of the first things you need when you travel from one place to the next? How, how can I get direction? Huh? Fuel. Uh, we do need fuel, so we're going to get, but, but what's the, I mean, we, huh? Come on, just yell some things out of here. A, a map, you don't have a map? You don't have a map, but you said a map. Come on, what? You, you, you got a map? How you get a map? Oh, let's get out of here, Oh, man, I love you. Okay, so I got the map for this over here. Okay, so, well, it's a good map, too. Okay, like this. So I got the map. Now, I need to, I need to measure the distance from El, from Lord to El, okay, so how do, I need something to measure with, uh, now what are some of the things that you got, huh? Measuring tape. Measuring tape? A, a ruler, oh, that's good. So you got a ruler? You don't have a ruler. You got a ruler? Oh, boy. You got all that, okay? I'll do that. Okay. So, so we got the ruler. And we got the mat. Okay. So now we're gonna, we're gonna get started here. Okay. So if I measure it the right way, it says that the Lord that's about one and three, almost three quarters inches. Okay. So I, you guys gotta help me out with this map now. So one and three quarters, almost three quarters inches. So I could round down to about one and a half, or I could round up to one and three quarters. What do you think I should do? Round down or round up? Round up. Round up? Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, if I round down, I can save you some money, right? You know, it's, it's fuel is a lot. So I should have round down? Yeah, yeah. But if, oh, man, you know, if we run out of gas, if we land in a field or on top of a tree, I mean, that's not going to be the best thing, I'm telling you. Oh, 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 listen. If we land in some white folks, y'all, who don't think Negroes can fly, now, it may be good to see the look on their faces, but the eagle, I may not survive that. So uh, I think we're going to we round up. That's, that's good. Okay, so we'll round up. So we'll round up to one and three quarters. So we got one and three quarters. This mass says about 82 inches, or one inch to 82 miles. Okay, one inch to 82 miles. So we got one and three quarters. So we got 82 and three quarters. So how can I get the three quarters? 
because I'll divide 82 by 4. And I said, okay, so let's see. 82 divided by 4. That's not such an even number. Anybody get that? Wait. So, so, you know what? I'll round up again to 84. So, 84, okay. 84 divided by 4, that's... Anybody 84 divided by 4? 21! Ah, oh, you're right. That's what I got right there. 21. So, 21, we need 3 of them. So, 21, 21, 21. That's, that's 63. So, 82 and 63 is 140. Oh! I love y'all. So, we got to go by 145 miles, right? So, 145 miles. This bird get about 10 miles to the gallon. So you know what? Let's just say 150 miles. Okay. So it's 10 miles to the gallon. So that's 15 gallons. 10 cents a gallon, 15 gallons. Can okay. anybody okay, do that math for me? For 10 cents a gallon, 15 gallons. Is that a what? Dollar fifty. Dollar fifty. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So all we need, man, all we need is a ah. Uh, all we need is a dollar fifty. So let, let me get. It. I don't have it. I've only got two nickels. Two nickels? Well, that only gets us 10 miles. Mm. Oh, you know what that means? Yeah, we can't go. If you don't have enough money, Why not? for the next leg. No, 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 no. We, we can't do that, man. That, that, that's my suit. I love my suit, man. No, no, no. You know, come on. You know I was going to put that on. I was going to walk through the streets of Harlem like this. Yeah. Come on. Come on, man. We're going to get to New York and we're going to have one of the cats. Hey, that, 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 that's, that's just plain old wrong, man. That's my story. There's no choice. Why can't you sell something of yours? Because all I got is my good looks and my flying ability, and that ain't for sale. Yeah, because ain't nobody buying that. Oh, now this is a good school. No, this is a good, is this a good school? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Slap me some. Slap me some. All right. Going once, going twice. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay so two dollars. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Anybody? How much we got going to pay for this suit? Not what? Oh, you got it. Oh, you gotta tell me how much, though. I can't do it. You got it here. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Make, make sure it's not the same money that he gave us because that was 2012. Let's, let's see what. Let, let, you guys together? Oh, they got, they all got the same money. Well, give that money back. No, we don't need that. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm sorry, but sit. thank you for. And it's just. $2.25. $2.25. $2.25. I think I think it may be good with you. Alright. Hey, hold on, tell you know what? I'm gonna get you this suit. Now, you know what? I think it's too much. Now listen, this is a stand-up. I need to see if it's gonna fit you. Now come on. Come on, come on. Let's see. Put that on. Oh, come on, throw that on, throw that on. Oh, 
I thought, I thought that was it. No, no, I knew that was it. I couldn't even hear myself praying on all that screen. I mean, the bird was practically on his nose when you landed it. Man, I thought that bird was going to land on top of me. How'd you do it, huh? How'd you get that bird to land like that? You know that bar slow and stuck you hate so much? Yeah. When you swear you'll get me killed one day? Uh-huh. Well, this one just saved my life. Oh, look, I, I did a slip slide and, and a stall landing. And well, you got lucky. No wind, you know, even a bit may have changed this outcome. <laughs> well, that was the finest slip slide I ever seen. I mean, you tilted the bird sideways, and I thought I was a dead man. <laughs> then you righted her just in time to slide onto the farmer's feet. Now, don't you know he was shocked to look out there and see us? <laughs> I mean, a field full of trees on one side and a fence on the other. Mm -hmm. Man, it's like we dropped out the sky. We did. You sure did. We dropped straight down. <laughs> you know, I probably would have done what you've done. No, I, actually, I know I would have. I would have tilted it sideways and right in the just in time to stay on that tree. yourself by that tree or that barn. <laughs> no, no, sir. I would have glided us. Yeah. <sighs> Who am I kidding? I would have cracked her up. No doubt. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It pains me to admit it, but I ain't never seen anyone fly like you. I mean, I'm going to give it to you. You may be a royal jackamo at times, but <laughs> you fly that thing like you part bird. I ain't talking about one of them sparrows. I mean, one of them hawks. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey, okay. Let's uh, take a look at this bird, see what she needs to get her back up in the air. Okay, all right, so, uh, okay. Uh, whew, broken push rods, mm -hmm. uh, two, both intake and exhaust. Oh, 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 they did not they need to be replaced, huh? Yeah, but we look, look at these people. Look at them looking at us like that. <laughs> they, they must be shocked to see us, right? Because they can't figure out how we got here, or because the color? Both. <laughs> I can't figure out how we got here and I was on the plane. Yeah, well, let's hope you don't mind helping us. Because we're going to need a push rod. Yeah. Hey, let's greet these folks. Hello, folks. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, oh, thank you. Hey, 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 Tell them your name. My name is James Herman Van. Okay, I am Thomas Cox Allen. Okay? Yeah, and we're looking to get into town. We just need a little bit of help. We, we got to so get our parts for our plane. Anybody you know, ever give up some, some, some gas, the, uh, you know, any mechanics, any parts? <sighs> I'm right at the town. Oh, 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 thank you so much. I, I think we, you know, this is going to help us bottom push okay? How much? No, no, I, I believe in you. This is three. three. Oh, give us the slide. Thank you so much. Slide. So there we go. All right. Now, hold on. All right. Let's check this. Okay. Let's see if we can put it on. Alright, that's good. Uh, thank you so much, folks. We appreciate your hospitality and your generosity. Oh, yeah, we gotta go, we gotta go. All right. Thank you guys, thank you guys so much. We're making history! How are we gonna get that time Wait. 
they said you couldn't, but we did. Now to the airport. We made it. Instead of being called a Negro, you can be 
African Wait, the American? Just before we do the 
raffles. Um, we had a couple of little, I mean, and, 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 and this was a professional, but we had a couple of stars of our own today, our own little uh, living museum. So all the students that walked around as famous scientists throughout the evening, please come up and be recognized. Just briefly tell them who you are if they didn't see you. See you. Now, 
always talking. He said he was a pilot. He said, I, I knew he was going to say, that's all he talked about. And he a pilot. So he was say that you're such a great pilot and I'm just a mechanic, huh? huh? Oh, oh, so, so you are banned the pilot. So important. Oh, yeah. Now, did he tell y'all that I can fly? Did he tell you that? No, no he didn't tell you that. Huh? He didn't say that. It's all about him. It's all about you, huh? Why you ain't telling him? He didn't say your name. You didn't even say, he didn't even say my name. Oh, no. Is he serious? He didn't say my name. Oh, so, so, so you said, I don't matter, huh? Really? Let me ask you this. Who gave you that 200 you needed, huh? Oh, 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 you know, who got that old bird up and flying? We have to get it. Folks, this here is Thomas Cox Allen. Uh, thank you. He mm -hmm. bought his way onto the flight with $200. Whoa, 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 you just told these people I bought my way on? Well, you're not here because you're so easy to get along with. Look, remember why we're here. We're here because we need to get the roads So you just gonna keep talking as usual when well, you plan on being a natural boost yourself? What's that supposed to mean? It means you're always complaining. You know, you complain more than well, more than what? So you you don't watch your mouth. I got a lot of people out here. Don't tell me what up. You're gonna talk to me. I'm right here. You're gonna say something. The town's people. Remember? <laughs> uh, sorry. Mm. Uh, we? Uh, we, but you were just about to tell me what you were going to say. Let me start over. My name is James Herman Bannon. I'm a pilot, the first Negro to receive his license in the United States. Now, how do you think? How does a Negro man get his pilot's license in 1927? In 1932, and a lot of people aren't very friendly. I'll tell you one thing. You have to be very careful. You have to be able to fly better than the best. You gotta be the best. Because people are so willing to decide that a colored person can't fly. But I can fly. I can barnstorm with the best of them. There's not a single stunt that I can't do. I can loop the loop, battle roll, and spin die. When you're colored and you want to fly, you also got to be able to fix your old bird when it breaks down. Especially when your old bird got a 14-year-old engine. That thing can need constant fixing. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So I might joke around with Alan, but I do need a great mechanic. That's me. <laughs> but like I said, we have to be able to put this bird back together more often than we should. You, you see, um, Alan and I, <laughs> or known as the Suntan Lindbergh. <laughs> I mean, the real joke is that no Lindbergh would ever fly our old plane. It has a 14 year old engine and salvage parts. And from what I hear, Mr. Lindbergh had a special plane. Oh, special? Oh, yeah. Now, Charles Lindbergh had numerous backers. I mean, enough to pay for his expedition and build the perfect plane to fly across. The ocean. He had tons of money. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Now his spirit of St. Louis was custom built and the best plane of his day. It had a single engine with extra power to accommodate that extra weight for takeoff. Wings stretched from a normal 27 feet to 45 feet in length. 45 feet in length. Hey, hey, that's not all. Now, the pilot's cockpit, they put that behind the fuel tanks. Fuel tanks which carried 400 gallons. Member had a specially designed plane. A plane designed by him so he could carry more gas and have extra lift. Wow, ain't that something? Designing your own plane to fly across the United States. Hmm. Our old bird could carry 35 gallons. Think about that. 35 gallons compared to 400 gallons. Uh -huh. And what did we have when we took over California? A rickety old Eagle Rock with a 14-year-old engine and 25 gallons. Yes, and no one gave us money to build a special plane. And Lindbergh had every newspaper follow everything he does. And New York Times isn't covering us with what we're doing. 
You think it's because we're Negro? Hey, uh, you know, New York Times. Anybody here from the New York Times? That's a good reporter. I feel like a reporter. You hear me from the New York Times. Now, you know what? If you want to take it, you want to do it. Hold on, hold on. Matter of fact, you don't have to do it for me. Just take a picture. Take a picture of me because I'm going to be good for a paper. Well, you know what? Take my good side. This is my good side right here. Take you know that. Your good side means you can face away from the camera. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Alan Dwight. You fooled all our stamps for twenty-five dollars in our pockets. You gotta be wondering why we're doing this. We're taking to the sky because we can, so that one day you can. Why? To make sure all you all know that being Negro doesn't mean you can't fly. Mm -hmm. You can, no matter what anybody else says. Freedom in the air will one day lead to freedom on the ground. William Powell. William Powell. Hmm. This is a time when this, when this country considers a Negro less than human, unable to do the same task as whites, especially fly a plane. And I'm proving that we can't. We can't fly. We can do anything we set our minds to. We are proving that. <sighs> Look. We are, uh, we're traveling all across, but all we need is enough money to get to Lawsburg. Now, any donations, uh, uh, a place to sleep, food, uh, um, some, some gas money, anything, you know, love say, okay, you know what? Everyone who donates gets to sign the wing of our plane. Mm -hmm. We call that the Gold Book. Now, that, that was my idea, the Gold Book. You know, I got a great idea. Look, okay. if we just need someone, uh, sir, you look like a chef. You chef up pretty good? No, we're really yeah, hungry. Yeah. You can uh, talk right here. Is he a chef? 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 Looking for this flying machine, and you really know what's coming into town. 
I did make a remark out, I hope something would happen. So maybe the crowd got to stay in town for the next day, maybe we could see it. Late that evening, the report came in that the shit hit a stump and broke a propeller. Now, no, 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 I had nothing to do with that. I did, I, I promise you. But I can't say I was sorry, because I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, we, whoo, we looked at that plane and it was, <laughs> it was something else. So when I looked at that Jimmy, I said, one day, I'm going to fly one of them things. In the meantime, another plane came with the propeller, and I sat there, I watched them put it on, and I remained until those two planes took off. And I talked nothing but airplanes until my family moved to Oklahoma City in 1920. Loved it. Decided that day, I was going to fly. <laughs> uh, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way we came to fly, I was born in 1899, the same year the Wright brothers started the experiments to fight. That same year. So you saying you was meant to fly? Because you know lots of people were born that year. I'm saying I learned about flight at my mom and pa's knees. Mm -hmm. They can read and they read to us. One of my first memories was my dad telling me about the flight brothers taking off for 39 minutes on an aerial plane. I mean, how amazing is that? You remember that? Uh, I wasn't born yet, old man. <laughs> well, I started building kites. I remember standing outside my house as a young boy flying a kite for the first time. <laughs> I mean, it took me several times to make it. I mean, the first time was out some leaves and twigs, which quickly fell apart. <laughs> Never even made it in the air. I mean, you know how that is, you how to make something that just doesn't work? That didn't stop me. I built kites too. Did yours fly? Mine's like the crash to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but occasionally, one would take flight and it was something to see. You know, one time, I got so excited, I didn't look where I was going and smack right into the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like mine, is it? Mm -hmm. I had the same trouble getting my flights a day up in the air. I figured I needed something better than twigs and leaves. So I snatched some fabric from my mom's sewing basket, placed two sticks together in some twine, and I was off, rolling through the fields. It soared, truly.
can't even put into words how great that was. A me flying by myself, a bird man, a Negro bird man? You tell him. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what else I felt. Freedom. Mm. No one could have told me I couldn't fly. I was flying, and I was free. And so I'm here. So we're here. You know, maybe we should tell these good people of Lordsburg why we're here. I mean, who we are, maybe what we're doing in Lordsburg. Come on. We call ourselves the Flying Home Boats. We're flying from Los Angeles all the way to New York City. Yes, why we're flying? For you. So that one day you want to be up in the clouds, you can do it. Uh, look, 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 look. We're homeowners across the country, and all we need is enough money to get from Lawsburg to El Paso. Now, I mean, anybody who donates, they get to sign the wing of our plane. We call it the Gold Book. Now, I came up with that idea, the Gold Book, and that's on me. I know that I way you can follow us. Every step of this journey, you all can follow us. Alan, what do we need in gas? What? Did you calculate it? Uh, not yet. I mean, I, I'll calculate. Just, just go and take a break. Right, let me add up these figures. Okay, look, I need a little help. Um, <clears throat> so we, we got to figure out how much it's going to cost us to get from Lawsburg to El Paso. Now, anybody out here want to help me? Um, what was the... Oh, see, I, I need, I like y'all. Now, tell me, what's one of the first things you need when you travel from one place to the next? How, how can I get direction? Huh? Fuel, uh, we do need fuel, so we're gonna get, but, but what's the, I mean, we, huh? Come on, just yell some things out of me. A, a map, you have, you have a map? You don't have a map, but you said a map, come on, what? A you, boy, you, you got a map? How you get a map? Oh, it's got a map, Oh, man, I love you. Okay, so I got the map for this over here. Okay, so, well, it's a good map, too, okay? Like this, so I got the map. Now, I need to, I need to measure the distance from El, from Lord to El Okay, so how do, I need something to measure with. Uh, now what are some of the things that you got? Huh? Measuring tape. Measuring tape? Measuring tape? A ruler. A ruler. Oh, that's good. So you got a ruler? No. You don't have a ruler. Baby, you got a ruler? Oh, boy. You got all that? Okay. Okay. So, so we got the ruler. And we got the mat. Okay. So now we're gonna, we're gonna get started here. Okay. So if I measure it the right way, it says that the Lord is about one and three, almost three quarters inches. Okay. So I, you guys gotta help me out with this map now. So one and three quarters, almost three quarters inches. Now I could round down to about one and a half, or I could round up to one and three quarters. What do you think I should do? Round down or round up? Round up. Round up? Whoa, 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 now if I round down, I can save you some money, right? You know, because it's fuel is a lot. So I should I round down? Yeah, yeah. What if, oh man, you know, if we run out of gas, if we land in a field or on top of a tree, I mean, that's not going to be the best thing, I'm telling you. Oh, 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 listen, if we land in some white folks who don't think Negroes can fly, now it may be good to see the look on their faces, but the Eagle, I may not survive that. So uh, I think we're going, I think we're going to round up. That's, that's good. Okay, so we'll round up. So we'll round up to one and three quarters. So we got one and three quarters. This mass is about 82 inches, or one inch to 82 miles. Okay, one inch to 82 miles. So we got one and three quarters. So we got 82 and three quarters. So how can I get the three quarters? Three quarters. I'll divide 82 by four. That's like, okay, so let's see. 82 divided by four. That's not such an even number. Anybody get that? Wait. So, so, you know what? I'll round up again to 84. So, 84, okay. 84 divided by 4, that's... Anybody 84 divided by 4? 21! Ah, oh, you're right, because that's what I got right there, 21. So, 21, but we need 3 of them. So, 21, 21, 21, that's, that's 63. So, 82 and 63 is 140. Oh, I love y'all. So, we got to go about 145 miles, right? So, 145 miles. This bird get about 10 miles to the gallon. So you know what? Let's just say 150 miles. Okay. So it's 10 miles to the gallon. So that's 15 gallons. 10 cents a gallon, 15 gallons. Okay. 
Can anybody do that math for me with 10 cents a gallon? 15 gallons. Is that a what? Dollar fifty. Dollar fifty. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so all I need, man, all we need is a ah, uh, all we need is a dollar fifty. So let, let me get it. I don't have it. I've only got two nickels. Two nickels? Well, that only gets us ten miles. Huh? You know what that means? Yeah, we can't go. Because we don't have enough money Why not? for the next leg. No, 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 no. We, we can't do that, man. That, that, that's my suit. I love my suit, man. No, no, no. You know, come on. You know I was going to put that on. I was going to walk through the streets of Harlem like this. Yeah. Come on. Come on, now. We're going to get to New York. We're going to have one for gas. Hey, that, 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 that's, that's just plain old wrong, now. Come on. That's my suit. Hey, is it? There's no choice. Why can't you sell something of yours? Because all I got is my good looks and my flying ability. That ain't for sale. Yeah, because ain't nobody buying that. Come on. Now, this is a good suit. Oh, is this a good suit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Slap me some. Slap me some. All right. Go on once, go on twice. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so $2. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. 500. Anybody, how, how much do I want to pay for this suit? Not, what? Oh, you $500. Oh, you got to tell me how much. I can't do it. $500. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Make, make sure it's not the same money that he gave us because that was $2,012. Let's, let's see what. Let's, let's, you guys together? They got, they all got the same money. They'll give that money back. Now we don't need that. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm sorry, but thank you for. $2.25. $2.25. $2.25. I don't know. Go check that out. I think we may be good with that. Good stuff. All right. Hey, hold on. You know what? I'm going to get you this suit. Now, you know what? I need you too much. Now, listen, this is a stand up. I need to see if it's going to fit you. Now, come on. Lucky. No wind. You know, even a bit may have changed its outcome. 
Well, that was the finest flip slide I ever seen. I mean, you tilted the bird sideways, and I thought I was a dead man. <laughs> then you righted her just in time to slide onto the farmer's field. Mm. Now, don't you know he was shot to look out there and see us? <laughs> I mean, a field full of trees on one side and a fence on the other. Mm -hmm. Man, it's like we dropped out the sky. We did. We sure did. We dropped straight down. <laughs> you know, I probably would have done what you've done. No, I, actually, I know I would have. I would have took it sideways and right at this time and stuff like that. And practice up on that tree on that barn. <laughs> no, no, sir. I would have glided us. Yeah. <sighs> Who am I kidding? I would have cracked up. No doubt. <laughs> no, I don't hey, hey, hey. It pains me to admit it, but I ain't never seen anyone fly like you. I mean, I'm going to give it to you. You may be a royal jack of all at times, <laughs> but <laughs> you fly that thing like you part bird. And I ain't talking about one of them sparrows. I mean, one of them hawks. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey, okay, let's uh, take a look at this bird, see what she needs to get her back up in the air. Okay, all right. So, uh, okay. Uh, whew, broken push rods. Uh, two, both intake and exhaust. Now, oh, 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 they did not they need to be replaced. Now, yeah, we wait. Look, 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 look at these people. Look at them looking at us like that. <laughs> yeah, they must be shocked to see us, right? Because they can't figure out how we got here, or because the color? Both. <laughs> I can't figure out how we got here, and I was on the plane. Right? Yeah, well, let's hope you don't mind helping us, because we're going to need those push rods. Yeah. Hey, let's greet these folks. Hello, folks. Hey, How are you doing? doing? Thank you. Hey, 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 tell them your name. My name is James Herman Van. Okay, I am Thomas Cox Allen. Okay. Yeah, and we're looking to get into town. We just need a little bit of help. We need to get out of here. We need to get out of here. Anybody else can get out of Some gas, money, you know, any mechanics, any parts. I'm riding to town. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you so much. I, I, I think we, you know, this can help us buy them push rods. Okay, how much? Check. No, no, I, I believe in you. This is three. three. Oh, give us the slide. Thank you slide so much. Slide. So they can be throw them right. Now hold on. All right, let's check this. Okay, let me see if I can put it on. All right, that's good. Hey, hey, oh, thank you so much, folks. We appreciate your hospitality and your generosity. Oh, yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We're making history. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Fanny and Ellen had plenty of help. The townspeople, black and white, gathered around to see the plane. Most had never seen one before. They helped them get the parts they needed. They helped them get the Eagle Rock back up in the air. They flew to Pittsburgh, then on to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Then on to West Trip, New Jersey. There are now 72 names on the wing of their plane. 72 names on the Gold Book. Today we land New York, today we almost did. Hey, 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 don't jinx it. We ain't there until we did. You're making it. I know where you can't jinx it. That's the real estate. Uh huh. So, did you take a look at this bird? I mean, she can barely flap her wings. How many times do you see them down on us? How many times we have to land her in the middle of a field? Trust me, the only field we landed on is a New York field. Man, oh, I wish I had my suit to walk in all of it. Oh, they know that. Yeah, I guess you think we sold your suit. Hey, man, that suit was one of a kind. Man, there's a reason for that. <laughs> you don't know style. I mean, real New York style. Huh? I do get for heaven to Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty, here we come. I'm going to show you what style really is. Hey, you said no boss on me. You swore you would now. This is simple loop to let another fly hobos have a ride. Don't loop it, you promise. Oh, I'm looping, we're sure you loop
fly across the continental United States. Continent to the 
kind of space. Well, that just made me feel even better. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, next yeah. question. Wow. How did you get the information to put the first plane together? Uh, manuals. I mean, there were manuals that were available to us. And, of course, I had Lieutenant Fisher, who was also on my side during the times of me learning how to build a plane and put it up in the air. You know? And again, like I, I'll come back to education, which is very important. Very important. Because if I didn't know how to read, if I wasn't well read, I wouldn't be able to read the instructions on the manual. And it takes a lot of willpower and self-initiative to take that action to build a plane. And a lot of people didn't have that opportunity. But I did. I was in a great position, as if I was born to be here. We have another question. Yeah, sure. I, I actually have two. One, what happened after you landed in New York with your career? And two, is there anybody in particular that you inspired, whether it be white, Negro, African American? Uh, as far as inspiring folks, every stop we made from California, El Paso, um, yes, New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> here. Folks gathered around us and amazed that they see two black men flying. And just imagine the colored towns and the colored folks who saw us came up to us and shook our hands with such sense of great sense of pride. So yes, we might have done it indirectly, we might have not spoken to them, but you could see in their eyes there was a glitter of pride and confidence. So yes. We have another question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have the newspapers covered you? We had we had some who uh covered. We we have been covered by that time, but uh, we want to try to the New York Times. We are the Chicago Defender, Chicago the all the black African American <laughs> publication. They they yeah. they they got some real good uh, stories on hey, the mm -hmm. We had over ninety articles that actually covered us. Mm -hmm. Most are familiar with the black newspaper companies who were all around the country, mm -hmm. and, and the white newspapers they didn't cover us. They didn't cover us, and if we and if we were covered. We would have been known throughout the country, just as the Lindberghs were. I mean, we, we were inspired by them, but they were privileged. They were privileged, one, because they're white and they had money. But we didn't. We had to work our way and find our way to be discovered. And just a, a quick question. How many of you guys knew what we were doing or heard about us before we came here today? Feel dead. Feel dead. R.J. Bailey Field I like that. Shout out to R.J. Bailey Field I have one more question. Oh, okay. Did you wear those clothes in the summer? Well, you know that you look good in the summer? No. You look good in the summer? Well, we are hot. You look better than you. It was definitely better than you. He looks better than you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Wow, thank you guys. You guys have been so great, so welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.